Hello and thank you for tuning in to Neptune Knives. In this video, I did do a little discussion about steel choices for all the steel junkies out there and uh, steel to choose when choosing a knife and uh, some of the, the properties that each one has. Uh, in no way an expert, but uh, just here's some input. First, uh, typically speaking, those knives are categorized by their ability to hold an edge and their resistance to uh, chipping and breaking. Okay. And then comes uh, the three main, I would say, uh, alloys in knives, blades, that, that give them that performance, which would be and, and so the stainless aspect, which is chromium. Um, then there's vanadium for the edge retention, and then molybdenum for the heat resistance, and the, also some corrosion resistance. Now on the tool steels, uh, Crucible categorizes the M as Rex. So when you see like a Rex uh, steel on like a, um, a Strider or Custom or something, that's just a fancy way of saying uh, it's an M one of the M family tool steels. Now the tool steels, uh, high speed tool steels, right? The, you got the M series, M is for mobile, Molly B Denim. You know, you have the Vim crews that Strider uses on their customs, to the M4 military, to, you know, uh, Benchmade uses M4s, and uh, basically those steels, because they lack the chromium, uh, they, uh, they don't have that resistance to rust. So when considering that what happens on, on a knife is uh, another aspect that determines how brittle the knife is is how much alloy is in it. So at the top of the list you have the high alloy steels uh, such as like the, the, the ZDP-189 are more, much more brittle because they have like 23% uh, alloy. So what happens yeah. is you know when you have M4 it ha you took out that chromium and chromium uh, if you google uh, will weaken the steel and it's just because it adds it's adding lots of alloy that only helps the stainless aspects and so you remove that and now you have a, a, a more tougher uh, steel blade and with the, with the molly B denim in it be able to stand withstand heat buildup from friction uh, building you know causing that heat buildup when doing heavy cutting tasks for consistent constant cutting so definitely those tool steels that's their purpose uh, you look if you google uh, uh, Crucible, uh, the company, uh, and it'll pull up a chart and it'll show that M4's uh, toughness and edge retention are uh, higher than S30. So you can consider M4 as uh, S30 without the chromium and, and, and a boost in both of its stats. Now if you're considering then now one of the, um, the really heavy duty tool steels, uh, 3V or 9V, you know, on both of those, you know, um, what you're getting is a lot of toughness, like a uh, if you were to, to go and go to Crucible and just type in Crucible Selector S30V and it'll come up with, uh, it's hard to get to it, but you'll find it under Custom Tacticals, it's a PDF. And it'll show that 3V's toughness is like, comparable to uh, S30V is like four times as tough. It's just maybe 20% less than uh, uh, titanium. But the, the edge retention's only, maybe it's, it's a little bit more than 154 cm. And then you have 9V. You know, again, none, both of these can, can rust because there's no chromium. Not, it's the tool steels. 9V uh, has maybe about uh, uh, twice, uh, you know, I'll just show it right now. This is right here. See, right here you can see, there's that chart there. Now, uh, so what happens, you can see 9V, look at that edge, that wear resistance, that black bar right there. You know, comparable to S9V with all the S9V's van vanadium in it. You know, so we're talking keeping an edge forever. but. Look at the toughness of S90V, right there, that white bar. It's so low because S90V has a lot of materials and alloys in it, a high chromium amount. And then right here, without it, look how high it shoots up. So that's what you're, you're looking at. CPM9V is a great option. Uh, it's a much more robust option. I mean, this is like the heavy-duty version of S90V if you don't care about rust and, and if you don't want to maintain your knife. And I would say that... You're gonna to have to maintain your S90 knife anyway because it's stainless and it could it could build pitting. So you know you have to take that knife apart anyway. Just go to the 9V and, and this knife. And then you hit the the low alloy uh, stainless steels, uh, such as the the 440Cs and the the 400 family, the 154CM. And what that means is that's chrome. 440C for chrome or 150CM uh, for chrome molly B denim. Now, when you see knives with CPM before it, CPM just is a process that, uh, meaning that the, the crucible make, turns it into a powder, and that and instead the steel is more fine, and that boosts the stats a little bit. But uh, even 154 cm compared to CPM 154 cm, they're, they're the same in terms of what they contain. Uh, now, uh, 
440Cs and 154 cm are, are typically used for bearings, uh, you know, like on roller skates. Uh, ATS-34 is uh, the Japanese equivalent of 154cm. Um, 440C doesn't have the molly, that's why they, they add the molybdenum and create 154cm. Now, uh, molybdenum is really interesting though because uh, historically, like in World War One and Two, its popular went up because it was used as armor uh, for, for tanks and stuff like that because they, they realized that, it, it, that heat resistance, uh, because molybdenum can be used as a flame resistant coating. And so that's why I see uh, molybdenum in tool steels. And tool steels, like in car parts and you know industrial things and industrial cars or I mean engines, they have molybdenum. Uh, they have these parts that you can dry lubricate with graphite, and that's why you can do that. There's a lot of cuffs on my makers, such as Terzula and even the Three Sisters Forge. They like 154 cm because molybdenum, when mixed with chromium, creates even more resistance to uh, uh, you know the elements. And when I wanted to buy a knife from a custom knife maker, uh, a couple times they they tell them, they told me they prefer 154 cm. You would think why? And what happens is S30V because of the chromium in it. Um, it uh, the chromium uh, causes that layer of, of chromium oxide to form, which protects the knife from rust. But that layer, I've told you before, can, uh, can trap and, and cause rust to form uh, in small sections and, and, and not, not evenly over the blade. And that little, those small layers on S30 can then dig into the blade and cause like kind of like burrows and, and holes and possibly affect the structure of it. So when you have consider an S30V steel blade, you have to consider then the, the construction of the handle. And that's why the, the military uh, is not a very good knife because you need a knife, if you're going to use S30 and, and use it, I guess in, in normal ways is fine, but if you're going to use it in any situation outdoors, you're thinking long term use, you need to maintain your knife, S30 is going to require maintenancing and taking the knife apart and you need durable screws for that. You know, um, But what happens is, it S30V compared to uh, 154 cm has maybe three times as much uh, possibility of corroding, and so 154 cm that's the benefit. You're you're trading some of the edge retention, some of the uh, some of the um, the toughness a little bit, but but you're, but you're instead you're getting uh, the ability to dry lubricate, the ability to have a little bit of that tool steel heat resistance when cutting, and, and you know, so you can cut some heavy duty stuff and keep going. And also you're making it more, in terms of I guess tactical, you don't have to worry about the knife steel as much having uh, possibilities of, of uh, affecting the structure. And it's a little bit easier to sharpen because the rocker harness is a little uh, lower. But on CPM 154s, the, the actual possible uh, uh, rocker harness can go up to 62. So it just depends on the custom knife maker. So there's no, no way to say that this is not more hard than the S30Vs, uh, the Max 61 that the Spyderco puts on theirs. And now you move up to like the D2. Now if you look up on D2, D2 stats are, are uh, above 440C, but you know they're kind of just comparable to 154CM. But, but both the D2s and, and, and you know Hinder, he was using that. Uh, you can get up to a 64 Rockwell hardness, but it's predominantly it's 16% chromium. So predominantly, the purpose of D2 is still just to be a stainless uh, tool steel. It doesn't have a lot of molybdenum, so it's not going to do the heat resistance and, and cut industrial like. Uh, it's just you know kind of there in between, and that's why it's kind of going away. And now, if you look at the CTS XHP, uh, which is a uh, uh, what Hinder uses, um, and so on those Manixes and stuff. Now, when considering CTS XHP, uh, if you you know if you see a knife with Teflon washers, that's not because uh, they they think it's better. It's because the steel is either uh, soft, uh, or you know maybe such as N690, or, or even like the CTS XHP. That that steel has a high chromium amount to make it stainless, but it doesn't have corrosion resistance. I mean, resistance to different elements such as phosphor, which is why there's no phosphor bronze washers like there are in, on, uh, in fact, all these now except for this one in the hinderer. On the, the hinderer, hinder, uh, there's Teflon washers because, uh, you know, phosphor can't touch the steel. It's restricted. And if you look up on Carpenter Tool Steel's website, uh, it's another good website, uh, you can see some of the things that it's restricted, like salt and other things, and, and it's resistance to those elements. So with blade steels like S90V and even higher S110V and even these uh, the paramilitary 2 which that's a CTS 20CP which is a very close equivalent to uh, S90V you know what you're looking at is these are more premium than S30 because you know S S30 you know it's harder to sharpen 
and, and it's a uh, doesn't hold an edge as much. Uh, so you when you look at the at S90V, you know you, you're getting a little bit less toughness because there's more alloys in it, more vanadium in there, uh, but you're getting much. You saw the chart, way more improved, like three times as much edge retention, and so and it's easier to sharpen, which is what you're looking for in perhaps a pocket folder, and so. Uh, CTS, now remember that also to note, these are uh, the S9V and CTS uh, 20CP, Carpenter Tool Steel 20CP, are also known as uh, the 420V uh, family, also, just 420 vanadium. Actually, S9V is 420V. Uh, and this, and uh, the, uh, the CTS 20CP is also known as 420CW. So if I were to take an S30V, I would want one not too hard. Because then it would be easier to sharpen. Because edge retention doesn't always everything. I don't, you know, I don't want it to be brittle. And then that's why S30 is kind of in the average. You know, they, uh, it's got that good toughness and edge retention, and it's stainless, so it's easy to use. But then they, um, you know, they, they, they harden it to get the edge retention rather than go the S90V route, which you see mostly on customs. You know, like uh, this custom Strider S110s, uh, the CTS20 Sprint Runs for Spyderco, because this is easier to sharpen and and you know holds an edge three times better than S30V. Uh, just a little bit more brittle, and 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 that's the trade-off you get. Just a little bit, and you saw on the chart. Key thing to know about these S90Vs and CTS20CPs, that 420 family, is then uh, these knives again because of the stainless aspect, they need maintenance. Uh, you know, you, if you uh, use it. In, in a lot of situations, in different environments, uh, you need to be able to take this apart. And that's why these you know, knives like the Paramilitary 2 or the Sage 2 with, with their robust screw construction, Strider S30Vs, you know, uh, uh, Chris Reeve knives, they, they all allow you to take them apart easily and put them back together, and which make them good products. Like a Sage 3 bolt, ah, crap, you know, uh, uh, military with its uh, screws that, that aren't strong. But regardless of S20, S30V or S90V, uh, both of them can develop pitting, so you have to maintain them, and that means the knife should be uh, something you can take apart, so you should look for that. And so then, consider tool steels if you're not worried about rust. Um, you know, you don't mind maintaining the knife, uh, and uh, you're looking for something that can continuously cut and provide uh, a heavy-duty performance. You know, 3Vs with their you know, ability to, to stand impacts, 9V with its edge retention and toughness combined that excels the S90s and the CTS20CPs. Those 9Vs, uh, again, uh, then, you know, don't, you know, if you're looking for a knife that can do that, go for the, the tool steel route. Um, and they also can be dry lubricated, which makes maintenance easier. Then you have the, the VG10 and the N690 steels. Uh, Boker uh, uses N690, which is a, a German steel, and it's very common out there, so it's just more easy. Uh, same thing as this Deimos made in Italy. Uh, the BO uh, after the N690 is just to say the, the Boker's little custom little mix, but it's N690. VG10 uh, knives we'll see, say, made in Japan, because VG10 comes from Japan. Uh, that's where the steel is made. Uh, but VG10 basically has a, it is a cobalt and vanadium mix, but it has less vanadium, uh, so uh, it's a small amount of vanadium, so therefore the edge retention, that's why the edge retention isn't there. But with a, due to the fact that there isn't much alloy, that's why it doesn't break. Uh, which, this is brand new, and I've been throwing it, and it hasn't chipped or broken. Because of that kind of softness to it, uh, VG10 has 15% chromium and only 0.2% vanadium. So VG10 is a, is a steel that it doesn't have much uh, uh, alloys in it, uh, so it's, it's definitely a little bit tougher. And that's something to consider uh, on, on N690 and VG10 blades. If you want something easy to sharpen, uh, you know, but it can lose its edge but want not chip, then this is the, also a good consideration depending on what your uses are. Uh, now then, the last thing to consider is also uh, then the other ones such as ZDP189, again a Japanese made steel, or Kauri uh, in the US, that's their versions, Kauri X, Y. Um, these steels then have a high amount of alloys. Uh, you know, of course, that means they're much more brittle. With a, about 20% chromium and 3% of the carbon, uh, you're know, looking at 20 to 3% alloys right there. And so what happens is you're going to have, uh, you know, lots of edge retention uh, because of the hot rock wall hardness going up to the 65 and 67s. But of course, then you're looking looking at brittleness because there's a lot of alloy in it. Same thing with S125V, which has 14% chromium and 12% vanadium. Wikipedia's list of lay materials, type that in. And it'll tell you what all the different metal materials do, 